All right, uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this another Lord's Day, for all thy manifold blessings to us. We thank you for thy word and for those that thou didn't raise up to stand uh, against the, the attacks on thy church uh, throughout the ages. We thank you that thou hast raised up Westminster to the vines so that we might be able to better understand the truth and uh, understand what it is as well as, as as what it is not. Pray that thou hast caused us to understand and and uh, believe so that we might be better and able to serve thee. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, so we've got uh, question 60 today. Last time we started the fourth commandment, and we said that the fourth oh, commandment belongs to which table of the law? Remember, Kelly? We said the first table is... Which ones? One through four. Yeah, and this is the last of the first table. First table having to do with what, Maureen? Our relationship to God. Right. And so our relationship to God, all that we said was a, said was a relationship of what? Our relationship to God. Our relationship to God was a relationship of judge to criminal. All right, no, I'm saying our relationship to God is one of, he's not our buddy-buddy, he's, our relationship to him is one of worship, right? I remember listening to somebody say, I'll never forget it as long as I have my faculties, all, all my faculties. <laughs> intact and that is uh, that he said the first thing you do when you pray is to think about what you're doing isn't that profound when you pray think about what you who are you talking to your best friend you're talking to your creator and so our relationship to God is first and foremost one of worship so we said that the first commandment has to do with what was it Reynolds remember what related to worship do you remember no. Armin say that again right our object of worship. God demands that thou shalt have no other gods before me. Alright, is that he said all the uh, all the commandments contain contain uh, a requirement as well as a what? All that. Requirement as well as something that is forbidden. Right. What is required and what is forbidden. And if they are mentioned as a requirement, they also contain a what? Or you remember? <clears throat> no, I, I'm not sure I understand. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah, frequently I don't give enough information. So if they're stated in the positive, in other words, they also contain a negative aspect. If they're stated in the negative, they also contain positive injunctions. And so the first commandment is stated in the affirmative, right? Oh wait, thou shalt have no other, no, it's stated in the negative. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Which, think about that, in the positive would mean what? Uh, thou shalt have me as thy one and only God. And, yeah, and what does that mean? I mean, that's pretty deep. You go into that, that's quite a few sermons. What does it mean to have God as our God? God to begin with, and only God. What does it mean to have a God? Means, well, I think it was Paul Tillich divine, defined religion because you see this is this is so intricately related to what our everyday life. The um, th th they're trying to eliminate religion from pr pretty much any realm, and 
uh, one of the ways they're about it is that they say that uh, separation of church and state. And but Paul Tillich defined religion as ultimate concern. I like that. Uh, is there any th- is there any person who doesn't have an ultimate concern? And so, how can you separate religion from anything? So anyway, that's the first commandment. Tells us the object of worship. The second con- tells us what was it, Calvin? I shall not make any any graven image. The what? You remember, Luther. The second command. Thou shalt not make unto thyself any grave. No, what is it? It tells us the first commandment tells us the object of worship. Oh, the, the second, second commandment, commandment tells us the manner. The manner of worship. He commands that we worship him in a certain way. Third commandment is what, Roman? What's the third commandment? Right, and that tells us about the what? Remember, Roman? What about worship? All day. Attitude. The attitude of worship. And so, this probably, as well, if not better than any other commandment, tells us that. Worship isn't just something that we do one day a week, right? That uh, we take, we do not take the name of God in vain means that we have an attitude of worship through every day. And what was that? What is required in the third commandment? Holy, remember that? The third commandment requires... The Holy Reverend used to God's name's titles, attributes, and the, the Holy Reverend... Uh, holy and reverent use of God's names, titles, attributes, ordinances, word, and works. Then we got, last week we got to the fourth commandment, which tells us, well, it's similar to what we were talking about today. The word became flesh. Our first point was that um, there was a purpose in that. And so, if God is a God of order, he has a time for a specific specific time of worship. If something's important, uh, we have a saying in English, failing to plan. Remember that one, Kelly? What did he say? Failing to plan is planning to fail, right? And so if something is important enough, what do we do? I mean, like Mother's Day? We, <laughs> we put it on the calendar. <laughs> Your birthday? So you put it on the calendar. So you have a time for it, which is what the fourth commandment addresses. Uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And what do we say the word holy means? Reynolds, you remember? All right. At the very least, it means set apart. Christians are called. What's a word that Christians are called that means set apart? Saints. Saints. And so, why are we called saints? They don't, see, that's that's a big contrast uh, to the Roman Church, right? What is a saint in, the, in in Rome? In the Roman Church, somebody that what? Well, they've been granted that status by the Pope, right? Or the the, the, part of the, the, yeah. the Church. It's they they they've achieved a level of. Holiness right, or, they've or, set themselves apart right. from them. They're a cut above the rest, otherwise they would never be canonized as saints. But what does the scripture say? 
about a Christian. One who, what, Maureen? We're, we're all saints. You know, we're, and we are saints not because we've set ourselves apart by something uh, supercalifragilistic <laughs> work that we've done, but by what? God. By God. Yeah. Sets us apart. And he sets us apart. Uh, first, we look at 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Okay, Gil, read it. First John 2. Verse 16. For all. For all days in the world, the rest of the fish, the rest of the eyes, and the pride of life is not the fire, but he's not in the Okay, so he's set us apart. But interestingly enough, the scripture, when it speaks of setting apart, it speaks of the fact that the Christian is set apart from something and to something, right? Set apart from what? Get it. Set apart from... What does it say? We just read it. I went to the Gospel of John first. I had to okay. Uh, uh, first John 2... 15 and 16. First John 2, they think Well, set apart from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. Love not the world. The world, right. All right, the world system, which is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. All right, so we got, and then we got the same idea in Nehemiah 10, 28. The end of the verse, the first of the verse says, Rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the supporters, the singing, the Nethanims. And all they that had separated themselves from the people, from something to something. From what? Kelly, what does it say? The people of the land. The people of the land, from the world. Unto the law of God. There it is. That's a pretty good verse, isn't it? So we're separated. The Christian is. A saint, one who's been set apart from the world unto the law of God. And so would, what would we expect our worship to be uh, on Sunday? That everything about our worship is a, is a separation from a separation from the ideas of the world. In fact, antithetical right, to the ideas of the world. Uh, our, our sanctuaries... Uh, what, what, so have, you, have, you, have you noticed this? It's, it's creeping, right? Creeping in on a yearly basis. You start with one Christmas tree in the sanctuary, now you get to two, and then you say, well, let's have fun. I said, we can have two up on the platform, right? Couldn't we? <laughs> Did you ever have you look at that? Two Christmas trees. One's not enough. <laughs> You're thinking... Oh, first of all, yeah. Symmetric. First of all, and then, the, and then the decorations on the railing, and then... You got pretty soon you're gonna have Santa Claus, a preacher dressed up in a Santa Claus suit. No, they've already got that. We went to this. Uh, we had to endure the. I don't know what it was. The, the service uh, at this one. I, know, I think it was a Methodist church or something. Last Christmas Eve. Was it Christmas Eve or was it, it was Christmas Eve? The guy up now, they had a whole uh, Christmas tree lot for sale up on, on stage. But the guy was playing the guitar, wearing a Santa Claus hat. I think they were all wearing Santa Claus hats. Wow. And we sang, did we sing Jingle Bells? We sang some Humpty Dumpty like, Better watch out, better not cry. <laughs> this is at a church gathering? It was at a steeple building. With a, wow. I mean, yeah. You know, uh, and we had no glow sticks instead of candles. <laughs> well, you know, why not? Right. So, uh, 
So the Sabbath is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh, now that's an interesting idea itself. Uh, I, when you think of that, you think of Ephesians. Uh, I'll read it. Ephesians four. Um, is it four? Yeah, I think it's four. Uh, verse 3 or well, beginning with verse 1 I therefore the prison of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called with all loneliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love and de- endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace he doesn't command us to what see the point I'm trying to make Paul Lane you see it he doesn't command us to have union with the Spirit. Well, well, no, he doesn't command us to create unity. Right? we got to try to work together here. Uh, it, will a little more love make him start <laughs> to bend <laughs> if, if If I just, if, if I gave in a little bit, maybe he would give in a little bit. No, we're not commanded to create unity. We're commanded to what? Keep it. Keep the, the unity, unity that we already had. That we are, right. You didn't create the unity. You didn't build that. <laughs> Where did I get stuck on that today? But we we couldn't create unity. Why? It, 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 okay. The unity that that you would create would be what? Would be based on you. You would demand and everybody conform to you. That's why, interestingly enough, if you go to a culture which has no Christian influence, you quickly realize that the main, that perhaps the worst thing you can do in that culture is to criticize because you're saying that a person is wrong because they're not like you. Like that? It's kind of so, what everybody hears over here. I mean, yeah. That's been my experience growing so, up. you see the similarity with the Sabbath. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it. Holy, meaning what? What am I getting at? The Lord made it holy. Right. He made it holy. So, we're commanded to observe the holiness which the Sabbath already is. Yeah. It's like, uh, if you don't, Jonathan Edwards, I think of that statement he made. If if you don't, see, the people think that they're... Uh, Well, you can that you can uh, violate the Sabbath with impunity, whereas Edward said, if you won't, if you refuse to glorify God, uh, if God refu- if if God will not be glorified in you, He will glorify Himself on you. So, the Sabbath is holy, set apart. It was set apart in our culture, right? And it's gradually there. It is again. You see that creeping. Creeping, okay. Like, like this guy, that, where is that place that says, uh, is that in a Koi? I forget where that is. No, it's not a Koi. I think it's in a Popka. This convenience store, it says, we sell beer on Sundays. Have you seen that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay, well. <laughs> not we sell things on Sunday, we sell beer on Sunday. So, um, it's creeping and creeping and creeping. And, and interestingly enough, I consider this one of the major uh, setbacks in the in the total corruption of of the society is that we we took away the Sabbath. I mean, when I was in seminary in Texas, at the time they had the blue laws. There was no. I, I worked at a health club right in a mall. There was not one store open on Sunday, and then they did away with the blue laws, and then everybody opens up. And so, but remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And then it says six days. What is it? All day. Say that again. What's the fourth commandment? Fourth commandment is. Remember the Sabbath, Sabbath day. day. Keep it only six days. Shut that land and do all thy work for the seventh day. This is the Sabbath of the Lord. I got international to the word of Adam and our son. Not a daughter, not a manservant, not a maidservant, not a cattle, not a stranger within my gates. 
In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth to see and all the in the mills and rest of the seventh day work the Lord bless the Sabbath day. Yeah. So And then, uh, which day uh, of the seventh has God appointed to be the weekly Sabbath from the beginning of the world? Remember we said last week, what was the reason for the first Sabbath in the Old Testament? It was set apart for what? Kenneth, remember? Mm -hmm. What? Well, it was the day that the Lord rested. Yeah, rested from his work of from the work first work of creation, right? right? And so, uh, from the beginning of the world to the resurrection of Christ, God appointed the seventh day of the week to be the weekly Sabbath, and the first day of the week ever since to continue. It must have been a pretty big event, <laughs> right? <laughs> pretty big event. And what was it? It changed the observance of the Sabbath from the first day. To the seventh day. Remember, Maureen? The resurrection. Yeah. From the seventh day to the first. Yeah, from the seventh day to the first day. That, that, that Christ, uh, just as the Father completed his the first creation on the seventh day, so the Son completed his creation uh, on the first day of the week. And so we uh, celebrate, the se or we observe the Sabbath, celebrate. I don't like that word. <laughs> right? Have you noticed that too? They changed the word on Sunday. They changed the word for worship to celebration. You notice that? More and more and more. You haven't noticed that? Celebration. Yeah. So. The Catholics do. They celebrate the Mass. Oh, yeah, maybe, we're, maybe that's an influence. But we observe the Sabbath, and yet it's already there. And it's on the first day of the week to commemorate the fact that Christ uh, finished his work of uh, salvation. Now, so that tells us, it gives us an idea as to how the Sabbath is to be observed, which is what we're getting at today, right? Uh, didn't we start with verse, with question 60? How is the Sabbath to be sanctified? Calvin. Other days. And spending the whole time in the public. Okay, so first of all, uh, interesting that it says that the Sabbath is to be sanctified by a holy resting all that day, even from such. So, immediately, uh, it doesn't mention the idea of physical labor, although that's included. But it says, and, and so that which reminds us that, that, that Christians are people who think spiritually. Sabbath to be sanctified by a holy resting all that day, even from such worldly employments and recreations as are lawful on other days, and spending the whole time in the public and private exercises of God's worship, except so much as to be taken up in the works of necessity and mercy. I think that uh, one of the main things about the Sabbath is when I was a kid, there was still the idea that uh, of Sabbath keeping, whereas we've almost totally lost it now in the church. But it was always an idea, the idea of you can't do this, see, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do the other on the Sabbath. But the main idea, it seems to me, is what you do on the Sabbath. Which is to say what? What's he saying, basically? Huh? What, what, what you do on the Sabbath. 
See, notice it's a positive thing. The Sabbath is to be sanctified by a holy resting mm -hmm. all that day. Even from such, from, there you, there you have it again, even from such worldly employments and recreations as are lawful in other days. And spending the whole time in, so there you go. Mm -hmm. So you got the negative aspect right. and the positive. Resting from worldly employments, even those that are lawful on other days. And spending the whole time in the public and private exercises of God's worship. So, in other words, we, we, we can't lose sight of the fact that, that, that this isn't an exercise in, uh, what would we say? The last thing, the last thing, uh, think about it, the last thing that God, the, the last attitude that he would want us to have um, well, let's look at Isaiah fifty-eight thirteen. I think you'll get the idea better than any other verse. What did I say? Fifty-eight thirteen. Okay, Roman, read that. Thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, and do me my pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not do me my own way, nor by me my own pleasure, nor speak to me my own. All right. So... What's he basically saying? Well, he's not basically. He's saying it pretty directly. Uh, and call the Sabbath a delight. And so the last thing God wants us to do or the last attitude we should have is what? Which is the first attitude. Huh? Huh? Think of total depravity. What's the first attitude we have when we hear that God commands us, um, remembers the Sabbath day to keep it holy? What's the first attitude? What? Kill it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, not again. I, I gotta. It's just like uh, uh, where it speaks of uh, it speaks of of giving. I says not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful. So, what's the very first thing that we think of when we think about giving? Grudgingly, and of, I got well. I gotta give a tithe. So I'm just, get my calculator out and see how much I have to give. And, and then they say, and then what do they say after that? Is that the gross or the... <laughs> Not grudgingly. Or necessity. That's the very thing, right? That's the only attitude that we have by nature. And with respect to the Sabbath, this is... Why should it... Why should it be a delight? Look at Deuteronomy 10, 13 again. There we have it again. If I just didn't have to keep the Sabbath, then I could... <laughs> fill in the blank. Huh? Deuteronomy 10, 13. Read that, Kelly. To keep the commandments of the Lord and the statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Yeah. So, so what's the point I'm trying to say? Kelly, you get it? Our attitude should be the same as with all the other commandments and that is that God gives us these commandments. Huh? For what? Which I command thee this day. You have to, uh, to go in and say, for, for thy good. Hey, because he wants to bless us. And so he said, uh, you, you got to worship me alone. you got to, uh, it's not making any graven image. Take the name of the Lord. And, 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 and when we see, that's the thing that really, I, that really brings about, in my mind, conviction of sin. Is that not only have we, but not only do we, do we by nature, not keep any of God's commandments, but but the realization that 
in giving these. I mean, it would be one thing if, he, if, if there were ten laws that he gives us and he says, now you keep all those ten laws. You hear that? You got them memorized? You know, that would be one thing. If we, hey, what, the, the old joke is, where does the elephant sit in the, in the jungle? And he won't even want it. I mean, he gives you any commandment he wants to give you. And you, being a creature, are obligated to keep those. But when you realize that it's for your good, then you still uh, revolt against it. So, that's the attitude of the Sabbath. It's an attitude of what? Can it? Reverence. An attitude that... that okay, that, okay, let's see. Now, if I want to be cursed... What, oh, what could I do? I think I'll disobey the Sabbath. Well, it's a gratitude. Right? Yeah, in other words, you view this as this God is commanding you in order to bless you. So how can I keep this in the way that it's prescribed for me to keep it so that I will be blessed? Right? And that's the exact opposite of what we do by nature. But the fact remains is that this is a blessing. All right, let's just think about that a second. How would how would that bless us? How 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 is Sabbath keeping a blessing? All right, keep in mind that how many days of the week is it? Every other day that we, that Sabbath comes every other day, or when 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 does it come? One every Sabbath. All right. Now think about that. So I mean, it even says. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. I'll call up my friend Al, who's in relocated <laughs> frequently. I'll call him on sat- Saturday, and it, when he answers on, I'll say, Six days shalt thou labor. Because I know he's working on Saturday. Americans might have a six, five day work. Not Al. No. <laughs> I say, Six days shalt thou labor. Which is another point to be made. Some people say that. Which I tend to think more, and that's that he's not so much commanding us. You've got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and work every single day. Uh, but that the days for labor are within these six days. But some people go so far, I think Pink does that. Pink says, God commands you to work six days. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that he's wrong. Uh, but I am saying that... Uh, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So this, the seventh day is a day... I think, just think about what it would be like if you didn't have... Which is what, which is what we've got now, right? There's no more blue laws. Everybody, so every day is basically the same. Even though we still, I mean, it's not completely over there. They'll say, hours, you go to whatever, I mean, all day. Monday through Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday will be like, what, Monday through Friday will be like 10 to 9, and Sunday will be 11 to 8. <laughs> so, and so if you walked up here and said, hey, why don't, why don't you just open it? In a, they wouldn't know, right? They wouldn't know why they're two, two shorter hours on Sunday than the other day, because it's almost, why? It's almost completely secularized. Just a couple of more steps. And then there'll be seven days. What do you mean, Monday to Friday? <laughs> well, why would it be different any other day? So, so you see, you, I mean, you see from the negative aspect what it, what it would be like to not have, a, not to have a Sabbath means, what about the society? completely secularized completely there's no thought it's living for this world right totally the opposite of sanctification totally immersed in worldliness and so we have one day of the week to remind us of what we have in 1 John 5 19 look at that verse Okay, Reynolds. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies in 
You got it? You see what I'm trying to say? Maureen, you got it? First John 519, and we know. That we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. So the one day of the week is to remind your seat. Remember, you see it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it, it holy. One day of the week to remind yourself of this one principle. We are of God in the whole world. There's the antithesis again. What's the antithesis in that verse? You see it, Ari? We are of God, the whole world is wicked. Right, whole world life and wickedness, or the wicked one, it can be translated too. We belong to God, the whole world belongs to Satan, or the whole rest of the world. See, there, there's one of your all, your all passages too, for God so loved the world. So we are of God, and the whole world, including us, lies in, <laughs> right? You see that? Right. The whole world. For God's all of the world. That means everybody in the world. What about this verse? We're of God and the whole world, which would, have, of course, include us too. Uh, lies in wickedness. Okay. What's our next point? <laughs> so, you have the Sabbath to be set apart for our good. In question 61, all in, what is that? What is forbidden in the Fourth Commandment? Fourth Commandment forbid it. The fourth commandment forbiddeth the omission of careless performance of the duties required and the profaning the day by idleness or by doing that which is in itself sinful by any unnecessary thoughts, words, or works by a worldly importance or recreation. Okay, so we get the, you see the importance of the catechism, how it gets your thinking in the right vein. Uh, the omission or careless performance of the duties. What, 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 what is that there for? The omission or careless performance of the duties required. Um, I was just talking to that couple, a Chinese couple, the husband. He's in business for himself in China. And uh, in China, when you talk about quality control, that's up at the top of the list. Because 50 years of communism has totally messed up their thinking. Imagine a person thinking that there's no necessary relationship between effort and success. Take that out of your thinking. Th think about what that would do to you. There's no necessary relationship between effort and success. See? The government gives you whatever you get for doing the same thing that you would do whether or not you got a better, bigger salary or lesser salary. So, this guy's talking about quality control and training Chinese people to be diligent. And so, how does that relate? If you, hey, if you want to be successful, then what do you do? Hold on. If you want to be a successful businessman, you, you interview people like, hey, Donald Trump. You interview these people. What, what 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 are certain characteristics that they have in common? Only what would you think? They are able to find the product which the public needs, but which it currently doesn't have, and so they can All right. To supply the the, number one, they're diligent. They don't they don't uh, do it, do do something one day and forget about it the next day. They stay on task. They're diligent. They don't. Sleep 12 hours a day. What about what else about him? It's like Dick, Dick Clark. I mean, he was a total heathen, but I'll never forget one time he was interviewed. And, and, and we, can learn, we can learn stuff from, from people, from diligent people, even if they're diligent heathen. Uh, he, said, he said, I hate three things. Liars, <laughs> not lying. He said, liars... Lazy people, and most of all, excuses. You know, that's a successful person in the world. Dick Clark, I think I was huge success. So, forbid it the careless, the omission or careless performance of the duties required. Remember when uh, the, the Christ turned the water into wine, and his mother said, "Whatever he says to you, do." What did he say? He said, fill up those 
cisterns with water. And then what did it say? You remember what it said? No, what, what, what they did. Look at uh, John, what is that, John 2? Verse 4. Jesus saith unto a woman, oh, wait a second. His mother said to the servant, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do. There's no it there. Do. What is it about do? You don't understand. <laughs> and there were set there were six water bottles of and the man of pure body of the Jews containing two or three firkins of peace. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. So did they listen to Mary? You better believe it. And they filled them up to the brim. Yeah. You think that's something that they just, oh, I think, let's put rim in there. <laughs> no, they fill them up all the way. So, what's the principle taught there? The principle taught is blessing is commensurate with level of obedience. Right? For unto whomsoever as much, much is given of him shall be much required. So we know about the Sabbath. That's another principle. And we're going to you know, shoot it. I'm, I'm all off, off the track here. But uh, what did I just say? Kenneth? That the level of blessing was commensurate with the, the level of obedience. Yeah, with the level of obedience. Now, who determines your level of, of obedience? All name. God. God does. Well, then you just contradicted yourself. No, I didn't contradict myself. That's a fact. Uh, uh, the level of breast blessing is commensurate with the level of obedience. Now, just because God has determined your obedience, we, God's commands, what do we say? There's a principle that, that I say all the time. You're going to hear this over and over and over. God's commands are His enabling. So, that's what He's talking about. The omission or careless performance of the duties required. Why? Because careless performance means omission and careless performance means what? All day. You don't engage in public Your heart's not in it. Right? Your heart's not in it. If you're a careless performer, no. He's going to take uh, a great effort to succeed in the world, at least. And the profaning of the day by idleness or doing that which is in self sinful or by unnecessary thoughts, words, or works about our world. So, so what's the idea of being portrayed here? Kenneth, you got it? Isn't it? Focus, right? Or by unnecessary thoughts, words, or works about our world employment or recreation. It's not saying that we can't talk about other stuff, but it's saying what? There should be focus. On this one day, we're focused. What does is, what is Dave Ramsey say? <laughs> what does he say? Huh? You remember? Gazelle intensity. Gazelle intensity. What does he mean by that? You see the gazelle, he's out in the field, and he hears something that might be a lion. What does he do? Right? He's, like, he's focused. Well, it might be a lion. Yeah. Uh, the greatest possibility is it ain't online. So, ah, forget about it. No. <laughs> He's focused. So, we have to be focused. And then the last question. What are the reasons annexed to the fourth commandment? Luther, did we do that one? No? The reasons annexed to the fourth commandment are, Harmon. God's His own example. What would that be referring to? Corey? His rest. Yeah, he did it. <laughs> like somebody said, uh, the King James. I use the King James translation. If it was good enough for the Apostle Paul, it's good enough for me. 
<laughs> you never heard that before. <laughs> That's the ignorance of the guys. The King James only ites. But if it's good enough for God, hey, he's our example. And so his example, his own example, and his blessing the Sabbath day. He blessed the Sabbath day. And so, I mean, think about that. That is it, Ken? What would you say? Would it be possible for God to sanctify you through His Word on Monday? Would that be possible? Oh. Put that in your calculator and let it rest, go, go through about fifteen seconds. <laughs> I would say yes, but but what's it saying here? If that's true, huh? The argument of of what? From the, from the lesser to the greater, right? If it's true that you could be sanctified and by that truth our word is truth, then then what? If that's true, then what am I getting at? All the more so. All the more so on a day that he's blessed unto your sanctification because he called it holy. And when it says, remember the Sabbath, Sabbath day, to keep it holy, that means he's made it holy. He's made it holy unto your sanctification. And so, this day is specifically set apart for our sanctification, right? You get to see that? And so, you see how that should change our attitude toward the Sabbath from one of uh, what we would be without having the Holy Spirit, drudgery and, uh, oh, that again. From that to the attitude of, hey, wow, I want to I want to do as much as I can on this because this day is blessed unto my separated unto my sanctification. Now, do we see why is in the why is the church in the state that it's in? This is a big factor. Now, how does that relate to the church? Well, the church, originally the church, did the church open uh, businesses on Sunday? Well, some people were businessmen, but what am I getting at? How many sermons do you hear on the Sabbath where people uh, 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 clearly uh, point out that this is... See, so, here... How much, think about this logically. Would, would, if somebody's preaching on the Ten Commandments, would he get up and say, well, no, thou shalt not kill? Yeah, if you kill somebody. I mean, you run over somebody every once in a while. <laughs> you don't need to stop. I mean, maybe every, every other one. Uh, but, but what's the one that they t- almost totally neglect? It's the Sabbath, isn't it? And yet, there aren't nine commandments. There are Ten Commandments. And so the question is asked is how are we to observe the Sabbath? Not whether or not we should. It's how. And you've got some basic principles. Now, as far as specific application, like uh, somebody, somebody asked me, somebody told me the other day, I didn't even know why he brought it up. He said, I... I uh, Sometimes when I'm on, a, on my way home from church, I'll stop at a garage sale. And uh, he said, what do you think about that? I said, that's your conscience. I can't tell you what to do. I'll stop at a garage sale. So, so you got the, you got, you got the, uh, being a Christian, when we said this before, right? it's kind of like walking a, a tightrope. So you got the, you, 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 you got the, one on the one side is Pharisaism, and the other side is what? Huh? Antinomianism. There you go. Oh no, you can't stop at a garage sale on the way home. That'd be a violation of the Sabbath. I can't tell you that. Oh, I ran out of. I heard one time this guy. <laughs> this guy. He had these. He went to church and he had these long boots with laces on. He laced up his boots Saturday night and slept in his boots so he wouldn't have to spend so time, so much time Sunday morning lacing his. It gets to that level. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. 
What's yeah? With those but he wasn't going to violate the Sabbath because, I mean, well, you can't say. I mean that just that fact. That, right, that that fact wouldn't wouldn't Did he sleep with all wouldn't food in his mouth? necessitate. Yeah, wouldn't necessitate. Right, that's 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 the level it gets to. Right, but you see, you got that side, and then you have the antinomian side, and what would that look like? Well, here's the antinomian. Yeah, up well, like no, a, here's the here's the antinomian. No, here's the antinomian way of looking at. The, what do they say? No, what do they say? Christ is our Sabbath. Got it? Christ is our. Oh, yeah, that's antinomian way of dealing with this. Oh, man, Christ is our Sabbath. So Christ kept the Sabbath in our. Is there is there any truth to that? You better believe there is. Why do you keep the Sabbath? What do we say? The doctrine of impetration. Christ, right? One of us purchased every blessing, which includes Sabbath keeping. So, is it true to say Christ is your Sabbath? You better believe it's true. Otherwise, you would never even begin to keep the Sabbath. At the same time, what? We observe the Sabbath because. That's not an excuse not to keep it, but that is the, that's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Raison d'etre? Yeah. That's the very motivation and reason for our keeping the Sabbath. That's the basis for our keeping the Sabbath. That's the power for our keeping the Sabbath. Christ keeping of it and Christ resting after he accomplished our salvation. Not the least of which includes <laughs> Sabbath keeping. I mean, see, it's, it's, my view of the Sabbath is it's, it's, it's an attitude, right? That you see this Commandment as what? A, a blessing? Yeah, a blessing. I mean, just look at the church. You see, I mean, you see it right there. There's nobody that's calling for the observance of the Sabbath day. You don't hear it. You don't hear it anywhere. And so what? What's the world? What, what's the church? Worldliness. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this another day that thou hast given us. We thank thee for the Sabbath. We thank thee that thou hast set it apart unto our blessing, our benefit, that we come together on the Lord's day to worship thee in accordance with thy commandment, and that we're blessed by thy Holy Spirit and we're blessed the entire day. We pray that thou hast caused us to view it as something that is given us as a benefit and a blessing, pray that thou hast continue to bless us through its observance, which we only observe uh, owing to thy grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.